Uh, in, 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 hallelujah, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah. Yes, Lord, over and over and over and over again, over and over again, hallelujah. And so we're not standing here or sitting here because we were such smooth operators, but we're here because he made a way. Yeah, only because. Uh, while you uh, check out your Old Testament text after the book of Nahum and before the book of Zephaniah, you will find a nice little text called Habakkuk. After Nahum. Yeah, young folk try to get that Bible. Get used to handling the Bible, I'm telling you. Your mom and daddy ain't going to be there all the time to speak stuff for you. You're going to have to find these, some of these things for yourself. You're going to have to know where to locate these things. And these little books are called minor prophets, not because they're less important, but they're called minor prophets because they're brief works. Amen? After Nahum and before Zephaniah, there is Habakkuk. When all else fails, there's a table of contents. Ain't no shame in that now. Mm -mm, that's why they put it in there. <laughs> Amen. I ain't going to stay in the dark because I'm embarrassed to use a table of contents. Not me. Mm -mm -mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 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 In, oh man, uh, Habakkuk chapter 3, we're going to read verses 17, 18, and 19, and then we will turn to the book of Romans. Uh, chapter 7, and begin at verse uh, 14. Habakkuk 3, 17, 18, and 19. Amen. May we, hallelujah, read together the, the word of the Lord. May we read. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail. And the fields shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold. And there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength, and he will make my feet like hinds feet, and he will make me to walk upon mine high places to the chief singer on my stringed instruments. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And then in Romans chapter 7, We'll begin at verse uh, 14 and read through verse. We'll just stop at 17 right now. Amen. Amen. Romans 14, Romans 7, 14 through 17. Amen. Amen. May we read. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal sold under sin for that which I do I allow not for what I would that do I not but what I hate that I do 
If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Hallelujah. Only by the aid of the Holy Ghost will we seek his synthesis of these two passages as we seek uh, direction from him and his word. Uh, this is our subject today, pursuing sweet communion. Pursuing sweet communion. Now, because there is no great alliteration in that subject and no catchy little words, uh, we're going to have to ride it out to see what it means. Amen? Uh, pursuing sweet communion. Wouldn't it, wouldn't it be wonderful if in his holy purpose, God just, uh, once we got saved, if he just uh, put us on a smooth downward slide with the wind at our backs, wouldn't it be wonderful if things we call ups and downs of life were a thing of the past? once we got to know the Savior. Wouldn't it be wonderful if when we are blessed to reach one of those nice spots, the Lord would just let us tarry there for a long, long while. Wouldn't it be wonderful? Yeah. Without a doubt, it would. But that's not what the word teaches. So then we have to do these counter-cultural, even counter some church cultural messages that keep us in touch with God's perspective on life. Amen. Lest we become, become consumed with living in denial and just walking around in la-la land all the time. Or getting so consumed by the adversities of life that we just give up on faith. And say this God thing just ain't working for me. There's got to be a reasonable, godly, God-breathed explanation that keeps us focused through the matters of life. A book that came out in the mid-70s, Heinz Feet on high places. Nice book, little allegory. But don't be deceived by the subject. Hind's feet in high places is our goal. But it is not where we live every day. High places are places of peace. High places are places of tranquility. High places are places of safety. Hallelujah. But the title of the book really talks about the, the consummation of time when God ushers us into his presence. When we will experience his peace and tranquility and safety forever. But it also addresses 
the trip. <laughs> All of us on this thing called life's trip. And the reality is we can be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and that with a burning fire. But you still got to make the trip. The trip isn't always pleasant. It isn't always tasteful. It isn't always easy. And it sure isn't always preferred. Are we communicating? I know, I know people well enough to know that there's some, everybody in here old enough to understand what I'm saying, understands what I'm saying. You, we can try to give these images to the world that our lives are pristine and perfect and ideal but that ain't so good people have awful times saved people have to face some uphill battles and folk criticized um the old man barnes and the lady when they came out with that song about climbing up the rough side of the mountain. I'm coming up the rough side of the mountain. And they said, hey, you ain't supposed to be claiming no rough side. You ain't got to claim it. All you got to do is live, baby. And if you live, the rough side coming. You ain't got to claim it. You ain't got to look for it. You can live in denial. You can say, I have no rough sides. Then you are somebody else's rough side. Because they got to deal with you with your crazy self. The rest of us have to come up on the rough side sometime. But this sermon, in a word, encourages us to know that everything ain't so bad about the rough side. Of the Mount Tassie. Boy, I want to speak in some tongues right there. Everything is not so bad about the rough side of the mountain. We wouldn't learn some of what we knew and what we know if it wasn't for the rough side. So he talks about Heinz feet. Uh, the, the imagery in the Bible is actually talking about the, the, the back feet of a gazelle. In, in, in our area, it would be like deer. They're cousins. They, they're cousins. Like antelope. Amen. Amen. And if you ever watched uh, in some of the, you know, National Geographic or what, what, what that, the thing is, show used to come on Animal Kingdom. Yeah, if you ever watch that particular species of animal get caught, their pursuer almost always goes for the neck or the hind leg. Don't go for the front leg. They got two good ones on the front. But the pursuer knows if I want to get this animal, I got to get his strength. I got to get what can propel it out of a danger zone. Because it is in the hind's feet that strength is developed. It is in the hind's feet that elasticity is developed. Glory to God. You ever watched a deer jump? Them things can jump. Athlete and Glover. <laughs> he can explain that to you. <laughs> they can jump. So when you think if they jump, they might land right here like you or I might. Them hinds feet. Y'all hear what I'm saying? And the older they are, 
the more capable they are of negotiating different terrain because of the times. Are, are we communicating? I already told you the high places are those places of peace and tranquility. Amen and safety. But the only way to get there is you got to have some good hinds feet. If you watch some of them animal kingdom shows, you also remember that some of them great creatures didn't make it. They didn't fail because their front feet were bad. They failed because their hind feet were compromised. So what then, one ought be asking, has this matter of Heinz feet to do with pursuing sweet communion? Nietzsche, if you're taking notes, to just make three quick notes. Communion with God brings God's strength to man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it brings God's strength to man. Habakkuk said, God is my strength. He didn't say, God gives me strength. He said, God is my strength. So communion brings God's strength to me. It doesn't mean that I'm so strong I can get to God. It means that God is so loving that he gets to me. Whew. That's powerful right there. Hallelujah. He is my strength. Communion with God, secondly, amen, uh, gives us light-footedness. Amen. Communion with God gives you light feet. Amen. So that you can make it through challenging places. Amen. You, communion with God will teach you how to put your feet down without putting all your weight down. Is this thing making any sense? Yeah, yeah. You see, when you want to put your weight down, you put your foot down and you press it down. But when you, when, when, when you want light-footedness, all you want from what's beneath you is enough to propel you to the next point. So, light-footedness means I can, I can put my foot down, but I don't put my weight down right there. Are we communicating? And then, thirdly, communion with God brings elevation. Amen. So we commune with God. Amen. Means God brings his strength to us. He is our strength. Amen. Communion with God gives us light footedness. And communion with God brings us elevation. Now that sounds, that is such wonderful theory. Amen. But what does that theory look like? with some clothes on. That's why we go to Romans. Because Romans is where we really live. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, most, most theologians agree that it is Paul's most mature theological work. Because uh, Paul is just really real. Amen. He talks about the wonder of God and the gift of salvation and how we get saved and all of that, but he, he doesn't skirt around who we are. Amen. Amen. And it's easy, saints, to come to church, have a good service, and never deal with self. Have what we call a good service and never deal with self. Amen. So that's why this passage from Romans 7 is so, uh, so real. Because it deals with the struggle within us. Amen. Amen. I would dare not ask you, those who say they have no struggles, to raise their hands. Because I don't want to even witness nobody lying up in here. Paul 
says. Romans 7 and 14 following. Um, um, he talks about this struggle within. What creates the struggle? Right, here's some more words for you to write down. We are afflicted. We are afflicted, y'all. We are afflicted because of sin. <laughs> there is nobody born into the world who escapes the hand of sin on their lives and in their lives. Amen. Saved people don't need to be shy about affirming that, y'all. Don't be in denial. We are afflicted. If you would, would endure a little poor English, I is and you is too. We is afflicted. We are, thank you, ma'am. Yes, we is. We are afflicted. Who among us has escaped the presence and the power of sin? Who among us can say, I don't know what sin is? I don't. I've never had a struggle with sin or with the sin nature we are afflicted ah. and even more challenging to grasp than that because the word of God Paul tells us in Romans amen for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God so everybody's afflicted Amen. glory to God but in the matter of pursuing sweet communion glory to God we get saved <laughs> and we move from being afflicted to being conflicted Glory to God. I just need a couple real people who are willing to say, not only do I know the reality of the sin presence in my life, but I know the reality of being conflicted. I know the reality of feeling like there's more than one of me living up in me. I know the reality of knowing what's right, but doing what's wrong. I know the reality of knowing what to say, but saying what my flesh says. I know the reality of knowing God, but doing evil. I'm conflicted. Now, the only thing worse than a saint, a so-called saint, who is not in touch with their wretchedness or being afflicted, is a saint who is in denial about being conflicted. If you ain't got no nothing conflicting you about nothing, you ain't living nothing. Paul says, when I would do right, when I set my mind to do the right thing, evil is present on every hand. I didn't set out to do it. I didn't plan to do it. Anybody not understanding this? Conflicted. 
let me suggest that anybody with a mind to really do great things for the Lord is greatly conflicted. Let me just go on and put that out there, y'all. Now, I know a lot of church folk want to hear this kind of thing because we want to paint the picture that we get saved and everything is just honky-dory after that. That ain't true. Uh-uh. You set your mind to please God. The devil said, okay. Amen. Maybe I can't get you unsaved. But I can sure try to make your testimony a lie. I can sure try to make you look like a fool. And I'm going to try to do it in front of the folk who know your testimony in Christ. I ain't going to try to do it away from them. I'm going to try to do it in front of them. Because I need you to look mixed up. I need you to look double-minded. I need you to look like you don't know what you're talking about. You're saved on Sunday, but you're messed up on Monday. I need you to understand. But here comes the Holy Ghost. I never told you you would have every day without trials. I never told you that the wind would always be at your back. I never told you that everybody was going to be your friend. I never told you that sickness would never come in your body. I never told you that your money would never look funny. I never told you that your family wouldn't come under attack. I never told you that your mind would get mixed up. I never told you that you won't know whether you're going or coming sometime. But here's what I got to say. Greater is he that is within you than he that's in the world. Oh my, conflicted, hallelujah, the struggle, do I please myself or do I please God? Come on y'all, let's be real. Do I please self or do I please God? I know what God told me I ought to do as a husband. Or you ought to do as a wife or as a son or as a daughter. But I just ain't feeling that. But when God tell you to feel anything, he ain't never said feel nothing. Now you don't disclaim your feelings. But you realize I can't live out of that. And even if I have acted out of it a little bit I need to hurry up and get out of that because I ain't representing right the greater one is already in me which means I have the authority to tell myself who I'm going to listen to I got the authority tell y'all saints we are afflicted because of the presence of that sin issue. When we give our lives to give our lives to Christ, we become conflicted in this battle. Amen. What I I know the Lord is spiritual, I'm carnal, soul under sin for that which I do not allow. For that I, for that which I do, I allow not. That which I would, I do not. But what I hate, that I do. I want to kind of, I ain't going to stay that long, but we need to marinate in that for about 30 seconds. 
for that which I hate, I do. How many of us have said something and as soon as we got done saying it, the Holy Ghost convicted us and we said, you know, I should have kept my mouth Just because I'm feeling it doesn't mean it's appropriate to say. A wise person, a godly person, ask the Lord, God, my tongue. And then when you give me permission to say something, cause me to season it right. So that it has the desired effect. How many of us have decided about people, especially people we've been at odds with in one way? I don't never, never, I don't care what happened. Only to have the Holy Ghost, have some circumstance come up and the Holy Ghost say, all right, check, call him and check on him now. And you saying, Mm -mm, Lord. Mm -mm. Can, can I just pray for him? And so you go a day calling yourself praying for him. You ain't really praying for him. You say something like, Lord, help everybody. And you, as you say, you're praying for you. And the Lord said, didn't I tell you? Okay, Lord, it's probably too late now. Now, I'll call him in the morning. I'll call him in the morning. But the truth is, if we really have a heart for God, we cannot get around doing what the Lord says. We can act up. We can say, I ain't never. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> if, if they in quicksand, I'll throw them a cinder block. That's what I used to say. Ain't no sense of me lying. Undone done me like that. If I see him in quicksand, I'm looking for a block. But ain't no sense of lying to y'all because the Lord knows I've said it more than once. But thank God that great. Greater is he who is in us. Who can call us to attention and say, all right, you got your steam off. That was you. That was your flesh. Now, you belong to me. Now, what I need you to do is go represent me well. There's this. People do great things. Have little things eaten at them. Amen? Great gifts, great anointings. But little, are we communicating? And I'm telling y'all, y'all young people who may be just getting in touch with your giftedness and with your anointing, you had better know as you grow in your anointing, the, com the, the, the being conflicted is going to grow too. Ooh. That, this verse goes on Romans 8 18 following says for I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing for to will is present with me but how to perform that which is good I find not for the good which I would do not for the good that I would I do not but the evil which I would not that I do now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. 
For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. I need some real saints to say, sure enough. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, so then with the mind I serve the law of God. But with the flesh, the law of sin. 8 one says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Hallelujah. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Hallelujah. So we realize we are afflicted. Then we realize we're conflicted. And then we, we shift into being convicted. Amen. That's the work of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's the Holy Ghost saying that ain't me. That's you. You acting a fool, you're going to pay for that. Amen. How many of us had to pay for acting a fool? One way or another. Eat some crow, do some something. Amen. <laughs> That's the conviction. That reminds us that there is a war going on, but we can win the war. As a matter of fact, as we celebrate being in Christ, we have won the war. Amen. And then, th when this conviction comes, then the last step in the whole thing comes. That's ain't no ick this time. We got afflicted, conflicted, convicted, and no ick this time. The last one is elevated. Now I know some of y'all wondering, but what this this Roman thing, I can understand that, but what that got to do with Heinz feet anyway? Glad you're wondering. Elevation. Let's go to Romans 5. And I'm about done, so don't quit playing. <laughs> That's helping me. <laughs> Therefore, being justified by faith. Yes. Hallelujah. Y'all there? Yes. We have peace yes. with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. By whom also we access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope. Of the glory of God. And not only so. Come on hinds feet. 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 feet. Not only so. But we glory. In tribulation. Yeah, tribulations call, give me a chance to strengthen my hinds feet. Glory to God. Tribulations give me a chance to stand on precipices that are too narrow for me to walk on under normal conditions. Tribulation gives me a chance, amen, to go by a crevice and not be snared by the crevice. Amen. So the Bible says I glory in tribulation because tribulation, man, if I was 25 years younger, I'd go running up and down these choir stands and jumping off these seats, but I ain't going to do that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because what I'm trying to say to you is your hind feet give you agility. And you can run up and you can twist and you can move and you can maneuver because of your I glory in tribulation knowing I know. Just help me say I know. That tribulation worketh patience. Anybody other than me been impatient with situations. Like, Lord, I, Lord, why is this still undone? This thing should have been done already. This thing should have been finished already. Why am I still?
still dealing with this law it should have been done but god saying i'm trying to develop your hind feet i'm letting you go through it a little while longer so you can learn some patience i'm trying to teach you how to spring over stuff when things don't go just the way you think they and patience experience I warn our young people and not so young people all the time do not ignore the experience of people when somebody is crying out a warning to you out of their experience don't pry down their experience they're trying to save you some woes but if you ignore the woes then you're going to get some experience glory to god if you keep on reaching up on top of that stove and they said that i hot don't put your hand up there and you keep on reaching like something up there you just got to have then when that finger burn are we communicating experience patience works experience i need hands feet to get me out of my experiences some of us can remember clearly right now experiences that were not pleasant but god permitted the experience so that he could mature us he permitted the experience so that we could grow some backbone he permitted the experience so that after we got out of it we would realize nobody brought me out of that but the lord and experience hope that's why i need the hinds feet to get me from tribulation amen to patience to experience to hope and the bible says hope maketh not a shame because the love of god is shed abroad in our hearts by the holy ghost which is given unto us amen for when we were yet without strength in due time christ died for the ungodly for scarcely for a righteous man will one die yet prayer adventure for a good man some would even dare to die but god commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners christ died for us Elevation means that these trials and conflicts and tribulations are permitted. Amen. It means our sovereign God has deemed that through the shed blood of Jesus, he is going to strengthen our hinds feet so that we can jump over stuff. We, before I got into the message, we, amen, uh, amen, we're, we're singing some songs of it. The bottom line of all of it was we just wouldn't have made it if it wasn't for the Lord. Glory to God. Pursuing sweet communion and, and God sometimes when we got, amen, from tribulation, amen, to patience, amen, that was a, that was a, a high place. Amen. Only to find out that we had, we were, we were, we had improved, but we still hadn't reached there yet. Amen. So some stuff came that taught us some more stuff and we got into another habit. In other words, in other words, God will give us these stations in life where we enjoy, amen, the high places. But it's all with a, a move toward the ultimate high place we call heaven. Through these situations, the Holy Ghost gives us the power to navigate, to be agile, to stay balanced. To be capable of using a tiny little narrow ledge. Somebody else might look at it and say, ain't no way I can stand on that. But by faith, you can look at that ledge and say, if I can get to that ledge, I can use my hinds feet to get me to the next place. So, so get me on the get me where somebody else scared to go. Get me where somebody else refuses to go. Get me there. I'll make it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
so we keep fellowshipping and relating to God and he lets us go through these things y'all because he desires us to share in the end endless life and joy and peace with him so I'll go back where I started in Habakkuk Habakkuk's resolve is this if I yield to God I like the way that verse starts because he starts naming all the stuff that ain't right. <laughs> he said, the fig, the fig tree ain't blossoming. Ain't no fruit on the vine. The olives are failing. The fields ain't yielding no meat. The flock is cut off on the fold, and there is no herd in the stalls. Yet. That's where the Holy Ghost is calling me and you to today. He's calling us to that yet. Yeah, I'm dealing with some stuff, but God, what, I'm, what I got to say today is God's using that stuff to develop my hands feet. And in the meantime, I got to have this mind yet. Habakkuk says, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like hinds feet. Make me to walk upon high places. If I yield to the Lord, to his lead, he will cause me to know sweet communion. So when we share in holy communion as we will today, it is really a foretaste of the communion we will share in. When we see Jesus. There's an event. Called, talked about in the book of Revelation. Called the, the marriage feast of the Lamb. And we celebrate Holy Communion today. As appetizers. For what is to come. So don't get weary. Whatever, whatever circumstances you're facing or I will face this week, he's cultivating hinds feet. Listen, listen. He's, he's cultivating hinds feet. He's cultivating hinds feet. Because that's what's going to get me from where I am to the next level. And to the next level. Amen. He'll give me a little foretaste at each level. But at each level, he also gives me the invitation and he sets me up. So that I can't stay at that level. I got to move on to the next level. Anybody ever said, I just can't take no more. Only to have God give you some more. He's trying to say, you don't know what you can take. You're talking about what you feel like doing in your flesh. I'm saying, I want to get the glory out of this. And if you, give me a, if you give me a chance, I'll show you what I can do through you. Pursuing sweet communion. Communion is shared by the saints of the Most High God. People who have uh, confessed their sins and professed Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Share in holy communion. Amen. We don't treat it tritely. We don't play with it. You got to know Jesus and you got to really believe in him. Amen. You got to really believe in him as your personal Savior. Amen. And if you aren't there, you can get there right now. As all the rest of us are gathering our elements, amen, you can gather them too. But first, you've got to receive Jesus. 
as your personal Savior. You must confess your sins. You must confess your need for Jesus Christ as Lord of your life. You must. I invite you, I implore, I beg you, receive Jesus today. Receive Jesus today. If you are backslidden, which means at some point you did give your life to Christ, but you snatched it back and you haven't denied him, but you aren't living like you belong to him. Amen. Then come on and rededicate, 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 rededicate. Uh, so here and at home, if either of those situations uh, sound relevant for you, then embrace the truth that the Lord has before you. Please, please. To receive him as Lord of your life, he has to be Lord of all, all of your life, not part of your life. He can't be Lord over everything but your job. He can't be Lord over everything but your marriage. He can't be Lord over everything but your money. He, he's Lord over all. Or as they say, he is not Lord at all in your life. If you need to be rededicated, come on do that today if you need a church home and we don't play with that either amen you got to really believe that the Lord leads you wherever you go amen. no ulterior motive no nothing else except I really believe the Lord he ain't leading me there to do this that or the other he's leading me there so he can mold, continue molding me into his image Amen. So we extend that invitation right now. And we're going to offer a word of prayer as we prepare to go, amen, uh, right after that into Holy Communion. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, I thank you, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come saying, uh, we thank you today, we thank you today, we thank you today, we thank you today. We thank you, Lord, because decisions are make, being made right now. Right now, decisions are being made, God. Right now. Right now. People are hanging between life and death. Oh, God, I pray that they would cry out to you, the, the only, the one and only true and living God, the almighty God, the awesome God, who gave his son, Jesus the Christ, and the son gave his life, that whosoever believes in him doesn't need to perish but can have everlasting life. Oh God, save today. Amen. Save that sinner that's near as hell. Save that sinner that says, I don't want nothing to do with God. I'm done with this God thing. Save that sinner uh, who is just yielded to the con absolute control of the enemy. Send something to stop him, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray for those who need to recommit, to rededicate today. Whether, whether they are in this church building, at home, or out in the street somewhere. I pray for the one who re really needs to rededicate. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just pray, Lord. I pray, I pray, I pray. I pray for the rededication. The reclaiming of the backsliders. You never gave them away. You never threw them away. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for those who need to be connected or reconnected with some house of prayer. In the name of Jesus, lead them where you want them to go. Teach them what you want them to know. In the name of Jesus, 
I pray for particular people in particular places yes, who can use their power, their ability, and their influence to help your saints wherever they may be. In the name of Jesus, I pray for us as we go forward that we would be so sensitive to you, the Holy Spirit, that when you would prompt us to say or do, we would do that. We'd be careful to not do it in our flesh. We'd be careful to not do it in our feelings. We'd be careful to not do it to be seen. We'd be careful to not do it because we want to put another notch in our belt for who we drew to Christ. Father, we are making ourselves gods when we do that. Help us to be so careful in the name of Jesus. Oh God, draw back the ones who need to be drawn back. Strengthen the ones who need to be strengthened today in the name of Jesus. Strengthen the elders in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, for each one of us every day is taking us into territory we've never lived. Strengthen today, God. Pray for your peace, God. When we have to embrace circumstances and situations with which we are not familiar. Some of which we do not prefer. But we are trusting you, God. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Have your way today. Have your way, God. Have your way. We pray for, pray for the little children. In the name of Jesus, we pray for folk in those trying teens uh, who are uh, just exposed to how much they don't know, but are tempted to think they know everything. We pray for them, God. Oh, God, cover them, Lord, and rescue them from themselves. In the name of Jesus, cause them to lean not to their own understanding, but in all their ways acknowledge you because you promised to direct their paths. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, have your way now, Lord. We thank you for this call to discipleship. In Jesus' name, amen. Those out there who are making decisions, that number that you see, you can call at the end of worship, and a couple of our ministers will be there to deal with any serious concerns serious uh, if you want to if you need you know membership or those kinds of things amen amen we're not setting them up to try to address or counsel every situation that's not their purpose amen amen just deal with decisions amen 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 hallelujah Pursuing sweet communion. Boy, I thank God for that, for his word. Thank him for his word. His word is good all by itself. Now we trust that those at home uh, have your elements for Holy Communion with you. And that everybody here in the sanctuary has your communion elements. Anybody who doesn't, just raise your hand so that we, any, any saved person who doesn't have, um, who doesn't have it, please, uh, um, let us know so that we can get it to you. Two little elements, a little wafer of bread, and a cup of drink. The bread representing our Lord's body. The drink representing our Lord's blood. So that we can remember that we are empowered to pursue sweet communion only through the sacrificial death of our Savior on Calvary. He died. He died. That flesh died. Jesus died. The Christ never died. The spirit never died. God never died. But that flesh had to go. 
so that you and I could live. So we remember all he endured in his flesh when we take that little wafer of bread. And because his word says plainly, his word says plainly, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Um, his blood had to be spilt. It had to be spilt so that our names could be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. At home, whatever elements you have, we're about to pray and then we're going to partake. Yes. 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 Father, in the name of Jesus, we do thank you now. Thank you for this day. Thank you for Holy Communion, Lord. Thank you for the bread and thank you for the cup. Oh, God, bless this bread. Bless this cup as we look upon it only for its spiritual significance in the name of Jesus. Not to satisfy any hunger in the flesh, any craving of our flesh, Lord, but to satisfy our spirits, to remind us that we were bought with a price. We owed it, but we couldn't pay it. Jesus paid it didn't owe a thing. To remind us that salvation is free to us, but it wasn't cheap. It cost Jesus his life. So now, Lord, we offer these elements as you consecrate them so that we only, the only value we secure from them is their spiritual value. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bless us only you can in Jesus' name. The word of God says on the night when Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, this element of the, uh, of the uh, Passover meal that was kind of left over, but anyway... He took bread and we had given thanks. Uh, he said, this, this, this is my body, which is broken for you. Uh, take it and eat it. And do this in remembrance of me. Remember me. Maybe eat the bread. And after they had eaten that little morsel of bread that was never intended to satisfy the flesh, but spoke volumes in their spirits, he took the cup and said, this cup is a new testament, a new covenant, a new arrangement, a new agreement in my blood. Till I come, I want you to keep on doing this. Drink the cup in remembrance of me. Let us drink. Amen. Glory to God. Pursuing Holy Communion. What a privilege it is to share in this wonderful feast, even again. 